Hey guys, Westy here. So today I thought I'd show you what I've been working over during lockdown. Now, ever since Boris, um, not you mate, no, not this Boris, the other Boris decided to close the golf courses, I've had some spare time over at the weekends to, to work on a personal project. Now, it's something that I've wanted to work on for a long, long time, well over 20 years, and um, it was the right time to, to give it a go. And our recent trip to Japan acted as a catalyst for it, really. Tokyo, the scene over there for, for gaming, especially retro gaming and arcade gaming, is second to none. It's unbelievable. And it just opened up my eyes. And it just brought back all those feelings as a child that I had for gaming, my passion for it. So now was the right time for me to, to try and build an arcade machine. Um, and that's the reason why you're watching this video, because you know that I've built one. So let's go check it out. Let's go through some of the specs of the RK machine. Starting with the hardware, let's talk about the PC. So it's utilising old parts I've had lying around the house. So it's running an Intel Core i5-4690K overclocked to 4 GHz. It also has 16 GB of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1333 MHz. It also has an NVIDIA GTX 1660 graphics card. Now yes, some of you are probably thinking this is more power than I need to be running an RK machine. And yes, you're right. But my recent gaming rig I've upgraded to the latest NVIDIA RTX series cards. So this is the spare graphics card I've had lying around. Also being a Windows based machine I'll be playing some more of the modern day games like the Immortal Kombat's the latest Street Fighters and the Marvel vs Capcoms. So I can play these games at the highest quality settings and still get 60 frames per second. And also being a Windows based machine the trackball works really well so I can also play the latest PGA Tour game too. So the monitor that I used actually isn't a monitor at all, it's just a TV screen, which is a 1080p LG 32 inch. I didn't need to buy anything too special because the games that I'm going to be playing are mainly basic graphics anyway. And so the money that I saved from buying that TV screen actually went to my gaming monitor. Just to mention, the main interface I'm going to be using is a program called BigBox. It's an all-in-one user interface which helps organise all my games in one easy application. It's well worth the money, so I'm going to put a link in the description below, but by all means check it out, there is a free version too. The arcade cabinet itself was actually built using 18mm MDF and was cut by the guys over at Perfect Panels whose customer service was second to none. There was about a month worth of emails going back and forth making little design changes to make sure everything was going to fit perfectly. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to those guys for their customer service and all the help that they've gone throughout the project, especially Fran who's staying in constant communication with me. So if you live in the London area and need boards cut, I can thoroughly recommend Perfect Panels. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. Now after the arcade cabinet was built, I actually sprayed it with a water-based multi-surface paint. This helped me save time as I didn't have to apply a primer or undercoat. The external sides of the arcade machine were always going to be covered in vinyl, so I didn't want to spend too much time actually spraying the machine. So let's talk about the actual artwork. As I was building a four-player arcade machine, I wanted the artwork to resemble that. So there's a bunch of great four-player games out there. You've got the likes of X-Men, NBA Jam, Sunset Riders, the Dungeons and Dragons series, WWF WrestleFest, the various versions of Metal Slugs, and of course The Simpsons. But my all-time favourite four-player game has to be Turtles in Time. This is just a great all-round beat-em-up. I have so many fond memories from playing it at the arcades and even when it was ported over to the Super Nintendo. Back in the day, it felt like every weekend I was around my neighbour's house, Reese, playing it on the SNES. There always seemed to be a bunch of us around someone's house either playing a SNES or a NES. You had the brothers Reese, Kirk and Craig, 
the Wiccans brothers, John and Paul, who seemed to have every wrestling game there was, which was brilliant. And then you also had Phil, aka Chunky Pineapple, who seemed to have every NES game there is, while I had an Atari 2600. Nice. So I mentioned that Turtles in Time is my favourite four player game. Now the guys over at .me have just recently announced that a new Turtles game is coming out called Shredder's Revenge. Now it's only early footage that I've seen, it looks promising and it could be the actual Turtles game all of us 80s kids have been waiting for, so I will be checking it out. So most of the games I'm going to play are going to be two player, which meant I wanted player one and two in the centre and most square to the screen. So this means I had to make adjustments to the artwork for the characters to match. So at this point I'd like to give Oli a shout out over at arcadeshop.com for making the changes, his work is unbelievable. As you can see, it's top quality stuff here and I can thoroughly recommend it, so check out his website. Now the avid Turtles fan might have actually noticed that the artwork isn't actually from Turtles in Time, it's from the original arcade game. The reason behind that is that I wasn't actually a fan of the Turtles in Time theme. There was too many purples in it and it was quite basic compared to the original design. So some of you may have noticed that the artwork for the kick plate is taken from the original movie. Now the reason why I chose it is because I actually really liked the original movie poster. And I think it works quite well because it's quite a dark image and that I sprayed the actual base of the arcade machine black that it blends in well together. Now I did toy around with using maybe the character select screen which also means I would have had to have moved the characters around and I just don't think it would have worked because it would have been quite a pixelated image if I had to blow it up to such a size. So if you guys have any other suggestions that I could use the kit plate which kind of matches the rest of the artwork let me know but right now I'm quite happy using the movie poster. Now space was always going to be an issue with the arcade machine as it's sitting in the same room which doubles up as my office. So it was pivotal for the control panel to be a separate piece as I could remove it when not being played. I attached a set of drawer slides to the cabinet to the control panel which makes it easy for the control panel to slide into place and tape apart. So what's next for the arcade machine? Well I've been thinking about the design of the speaker grills and maybe that I can make them look like pizzas or even the sewer covers. Maybe not pizzas because it might be a bit too distracting but I think the sewer covers might look pretty good. So let me know what you think in the comments below or any suggestions how I can make that sort of happen because I'd be interested to know. So there's two styles of games at the moment which the arcade machine doesn't really cater for. That's light gun games and driving games. The latter being harder to actually implement mainly because it's not really designed for driving. It's not really going to look right, it's not going to feel right, so I would have to build something a bit more bespoke, which isn't going to happen, especially not in the near future anyways. With regards to light gun games, I really got into those sort of games in my late teens, early 20s. Myself and my mate Fabio we used to rinse time crisis at the arcades during our college years. Now, I've been following the Sindon project for quite some time now, and it's really taken off. The guys over at Arcade 1UP are actually utilising the Sindon technology in their latest Big Buck Hunter game, and I'll definitely be buying the Sindon guns at some point, so when I do, I'll post a new video with the updates. So talking of Arcade 1UP, it kind of leads me on to my next point. Now some of you might be thinking, Wesley, why didn't you just buy the Arcade 1UP version of the Turtles arcade machine? There's a few reasons why I didn't. First one being the size. The Arcade 1UP is three quarters size and I wanted a full size arcade machine. If you look at the pictures of it, I would end up getting backache playing it for too long. The overall size is just too small for my liking. Just look at the four adults trying to play it. They're too close together, the controls are too tight. I can just see four adults trying to play it at the same time, it wouldn't be fun. Secondly, I wanted to play a wider variety of games in it. Now, yes, I could have modded it, but from what I've read on various sites online, the buttons and the control sticks aren't the best, so I would have ripped them out and swapped them with a sandwich style sticks anyway. Not only that, the monitor doesn't take a standard video input, so I'd have to get a controller which would take a standard HDMI display port and then connect it back to the monitor. Which leads me into my third point, which is the monitor itself. It's just too small for my liking. The fourth point being is when I started the project it was unavailable from a retailer in the UK. I would have had to have paid crazy shipping fees which just didn't make sense. I think Smith Toys now sell it for around £330 which isn't a bad price. It's actually you get quite a lot for what it is. It's just not what I want in an arcade machine. My final point being as well is that I've never actually built anything to this sort of scale in my life. Not only that, that I've learned some new skills along the way. Now yes, mistakes were made while building it, but that's all part of the learning process. I'll value it more knowing that I've built it as well. So there you go guys. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, whether you like it, you dislike it, what you would change about it. Now if you're interested in the build itself, I've actually put together a bunch of clips which goes through the whole build process, so continue watching if it's something you're interested in. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So I've just taken delivery of all the panels. As you can see here, here are the side panels. And underneath there is the control panel lurking away. So the next step is to actually try and pull it all together. Um, I need to make sure that the measurements are actually correct and that I've, I've done this right because otherwise I've made a massive balls up straight away. Um, 
Now the plan is to, to cover the control panel and the side panels in uh, a vinyl. So I need to finish off the artwork and get that sent off for printing. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put this all together. Um, ideally, I'm gonna try and use pivot holes and screw it in all together. Um, I don't want to use wood glue, but I might have to. The main purpose of it really is that because this MDF weighs a ton, um, I want to be able to take it apart quite easily if I need to move it around. Because um, right now it's in our spare room, which was in the process of being decorated. And then um, lockdown happened and we're unable to get a plaster at the moment. So the parts are in here and I'm going to be assembling it in this spare room. So what you see here is the control panel, or to be more precise, the base of the control panel. Here what I've done, I've started to drill pocket holes which will go into the base of the control panel but also into each other as well. Hopefully it should just then bring everything in, pull everything in and make it a lot more solid. Um, I'm going to be using wood glue as well because these will never need to come out. So here's some video footage I've just sped up of me just putting it together and creating some of the pocket holes. Here's where I actually made my first mistake. I actually put the pocket holes in along the side so on the finished design you can actually see holes by the speaker grills. So all the pocket holes are now being created. So it's just a matter of trying to put it all together now. Um, like I've said previously, fingers crossed I could just do it with the pocket hole screws and not have to use wood glue. But um, now's the moment of truth, I suppose. Um, I also, as you can see here, I drilled a couple of hinge holes. Um, when I actually done came into the design, I didn't actually really think of how I was gonna get access to, to the bottom part. Cause here at the bottom of the actual cabinet, is where the PC is going to sit. Um, ideally, what I should have done is have access from the front, but that's now too late. So what I've done, I've put a couple of hinge holes in, some soft closed ones, which will just sit like so, so I can at least get round to the back of the arcade cabinet. And, and now I've got a door, which I can obviously open and close and gain access to the computer if I need to. So as you can see, it's starting to look like an arcade machine. Sadly, I couldn't just use uh, the pocket hole screws. Tried it, it just wasn't stable enough, so I've had to use wood glue on most of the components as well. But this, the actual control deck itself, will be able to slide out. So if I need to move it, at least it will be a lot lighter and actually manageable to move from room to room if needs be. I made a bit of an issue when trying to screw it all in. Some T-moulding around there, that should cover it up, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. Um, so yeah, the next stage now is to actually spray the panels and then cover it in vinyl. So slowly getting there, but um, yeah, on to the next stage now. So the control panel is wired up, just need to fit the screen and the speakers. And then I can start some testing. As you can see the vinyl still needs to be printed. Um, and I'll see, uh, I still need to work on the hardware part of it. So there's still a lot of configuration that needs to be done, but slowly getting there as you can see. So the amp and the speakers are now all in. The the amp is sitting and it will be be mounted to the top, but it's sitting at a nice place, so it'll actually be hidden for most people's view. Um, and it's still easy to reach as well. So yeah, not a bad position for it. So right now I have everything wired up. As you can see, the four controllers are illuminated. They are running through a powered USB free hub along with uh, a keyboard and a mouse because I still need to do a lot of setting up regarding the, the software. So one thing I need to figure out is how to actually power on the PC, which obviously then will send the signal to the monitor. The way PCs work, you need a momentary switch. Um, you can't just have a normal on off switch because it just power, it just won't power up. So right now I'm running the cable to the motherboard and on this end, this is where I'm going to wire the switch. You just need to complete the circuit. So if I just put the two wires together like so, the PC will boot like so. One thing I think that I might do is just uh, use one of the existing buttons I have. I have, I have eight buttons for each controller because I wasn't quite sure of what I was going to have with the control panel layout, where I was going to go six or eight buttons, but I've gone with six as you can see. So I've got a couple of spare buttons and, and what I might do is just wire it up green one up here so it's literally just press the button up here once the power's on and it should just boot the machine 
Right, so all the components are now fitted to the control panel. The last bit was the trackball. Now I had a bit of change of heart last minute with the trackball. Originally I had a smaller one, but I didn't actually like it once I fitted it because um, it didn't feel that robust. And also it didn't feel proportionate enough to the rest of the control panel. So I ended up opting for the Ultimark trackball. Now the issue I had was the hole that was originally cut was 70 mil. The Ultimark requires a 90 mil hole. So for that to happen, I ended up cutting out a 70 mil piece and used that as the center point. I then used the 90 mil hole cutter that you can see here outside it, which ended up cutting the bigger hole. Now, it was a bit hacky, but it's done the job and the trap ball is, is, is thin and solid. It's there, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now it's probably wasn't the easiest thing to do, probably not the best idea to do, but it's done the job. Now, if you can figure an easier way to cut a bigger hole, by all means, put it in the comments below. Let me know because um, who knows, I might have this issue sometime in the future. Um, or even if I need to build another arcade machine, or if I want to build another arcade machine, you don't necessarily need to. So the next stage is to give it a bit of a rub down and then to fit the vinyl artwork. So I'm gonna have to take all the parts out now, rub it all down, fit the artwork, and then it will be the side panels the light up marquee and the bezel and then that will be job done so the end is near quite excited so as you can see the control panel is now done the vinyl is on and so is the green t molding now i didn't recall any footage of me actually applying any of the vinyl or t molding mainly because there's a guy called bob over i like to make stuff who actually done a detailed video of how to do this so i highly recommend you watch that i'll put a link in the description below so all that's left for me to do now is play some games